Hi, I'm Travis Elliott with National Control Devices. Welcome to my desk, but don't get too comfortable because we're getting ready to go out in the field and shoot some range test videos. Now, one of the most common questions I get from customers is, uh, what is the range of your wireless products? Well, up until now, I've only been able to give you um, manufacturer-suggested uh, specifications. Um, the reason for that is, is we don't actually manufacture these wireless modules that we use on our devices. They're manufactured by Digi or Lynx. Uh, Lynx manufactures our key fob uh, devices, and then Digi actually manufactures uh, the wireless modules we use in the 802.15.4, ZB Zigbee Mesh, and XSC modules. They also manufacture our Ethernet modules, but we're not going to get into the range of that because that's kind of null and void. Now, um, I'm going to do three different uh, modules today. Now, I want to let you know I'm not going to do the ZB Zigbee Mesh uh, modules because their range is identical to the 802.15.4 modules. The only difference is the actual communication protocol they use. The range, frequency, all that is exactly the same. So with these uh, 802.15.4 modules, I'm using a one milliwatt internal antenna module. This is what we say whenever we say 300 foot range. This is, uh, is what the manufacturer suggests as a 300 foot range. The other 802.15.4 module we're going to use is the 100 milliwatt module with the external antenna. It has a little connector right here on the top of the board which connects to a small pigtail which connects to an external antenna that can be mounted to the outside of an enclosure just like this. Um, they're saying those are rated for about a one mile range so we'll see exactly what we can get out of that. We're also going to do um, the XSC modules. Now, whenever we say 15 mile wireless range on our website, that means you're using these types of modules with a very large uh, antenna mounted outside the building. Um, these things kind of look like old style TV antennas, very large and definitely need to be sturdily mounted to the outside of the building. Now, it's not really feasible for, for me to do range videos with something like that. So I'm going to be using these in what we call a two mile range configuration, which means we have the XSC modules and one of these uh, external antennas that are about six inches long or so. So those are the modules I'm going to be reviewing. We're going to try and do some clear line of sight videos, basically meaning a module's here and a module's here, and they're uh, capable of seeing each other. There's no obstacles in between them or anything like that. So we're going to do a clear line of sight rating for all three of them. We're also going to do a uh, minimal obstacle video, which means uh, probably a lightly wooded area where there's a few trees. Um, the uh, frequency waves will still be able to kind of move around and through those trees and make connection, but it should kind of hinder the range of the devices just a little bit. So we'll see what kind of part that plays in these devices. And then we're going to also test them inside of a building environment, such as the building uh, we're in here, which is our office building. Uh, there's two levels, so we'll be able to put one in the one extreme corner of the building and the one in the other extreme corner. And you'll be able to see how these things work inside of a building um, and how things like that work. I may also try and find uh, some type of masonry wall, maybe a concrete or cinder block wall uh, or a brick wall that will kind of show how that affects the range of the modules because this building is actually a, uh, a wood structure, um, wood and, and sheetrock or plaster. Um, it's not going to hinder range really a whole lot. Uh, the waves are able to move through those pretty well. But with masonry, steel, things like that, uh, those are really dead ends for radio signals. So we'll see how well these devices do in, in those types of environments. So if you're about ready, um, I'm going to pack everything up here. Oh, one quick thing. I want to show you what we're using to test these devices. For power sources, I have two 12-volt lantern batteries. Um, I don't recommend powering these devices in, in uh, 
and everyday installations um, off battery power because they do suck quite a bit of juice. You know, if you're only using the devices for a few hours, uh, maybe a day or two, you can get away with using some large batteries like this. Otherwise, I do recommend um, having a constant power source. So that's my power source. Nice thing about this, it's mobile. I can drop the units off and, uh, and walk around with them real easy. Now, uh, as far as what am I going to put the modules in, I'm going to be using uh, a, a pair of Mirex controllers here. Uh, for more information about the Mirex controllers, there's a link below this video. Basically, the way it works is you have two boards. Um, you install a module in each of the boards, um, and they communicate wirelessly to each other. If I didn't generate a contact closure or a button push or a relay click on this end, it will send a wireless signal to turn this relay on. So really good for range testing. Uh, and what I'm using to generate the contact closure on my input board here, I don't want to have someone over there having to constantly hit a button to see if we have range or not. So what I have is just a reactor controller. Uh, for more information about that, there's a link below this video about the reactors. What it's going to do is whenever I push this button right here, it's going to turn a relay on and off and on and off once every two seconds. It's going to turn the relay on and off. Uh, I have the relay on the reactor board connected to the input of this Mirax board. So it's turning a contact closure on and off. My Mirax board here reads that and then sends a wireless signal to my Mirax receiver to turn its relay on and off. So that's what's going on at the sender end. At the receiver end, it receives those signals to turn its relay on and off. I have that relay um, attached to a power supply input and then powering uh, this little buzzer. So the buzzer will go beep, 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 uh, whenever it's actually receiving a valid signal from its mating controller. So that's basically the equipment I'm going to use. Those are the modules we're going to test. So let's get out there and see what these things can really do.